In a dark and terrifying room, Yi Jie cries on his knees as he claims he doesn't deserve this because he didn't do anything wrong. A mysterious woman suddenly shoots Yi Jie and throws him off a plane, but even with a hole in his forehead, Yi Jie opens his eyes. This all started seven years ago. Yi Jie is on his way to an interview at a very prestigious company when suddenly a man runs through a busy road and gets hit by a car. Yi Jie checks on the guy, but he dies as he clutches onto Yi Jie's arm, leaving him very shaken. Later during the interview, Yi Jie is still going through his trauma and he can't answer anything properly, so he doesn't get the job. Having failed to secure a job, Yi Jie graduates with a big student debt, so he has to start getting menial jobs like delivery guy and waiter. His family can't help him because his father is dead and his mother is a janitor that already sacrificed a lot to give him a good education. Yi Jie never stops sending resumes to various companies, but he repeatedly fails to get a full-time job. After seven years of working part-time jobs, Yi Jie finally gets an interview at the big company again. Interviewer Tae Yu is impressed by the resume, and Yi Jie leaves the meeting with high hopes. However he soon gets a call from a friend, who informs him that all the money they invested in another friend's deal is gone because the guy disappeared. Yi Jie rushes to his friend's apartment and starts pounding on the door, but nobody answers. Since those were all his savings, Yi Jie gets furious and starts hitting the door with a fire extinguisher until he falls to his knees as he has a breakdown. Moments later he ends up in the police station for destruction of property, so Yi Jie asks the cops to arrest his friend. However they can't do anything because investing in a business that failed isn't illegal. In the evening Yi Jie goes to see his girlfriend Jisoo, who comes out of a car with a guy that gives her flowers. Once the man is gone, Yi Jie approaches her, who immediately smells that he's been drinking. She mentions that he hasn't been able to get much work this month and gives him an envelope, but he thinks of it as charity and realizes he's been nothing but a burden. Thinking their relationship won't go anywhere, Yi Jie breaks up with her. Moments later Yi Jie goes to his apartment, only to discover that the landlord has kicked him out and he's keeping the deposit to make up for overdue rent. All of Yi Jie's things have been left outside under the rain, so he has to move as much stuff as possible to protect it. Sadly there isn't much room and when morning comes, he's lost many of his things. After spending the night sleeping on the ground, Yi Jie gets a message from the company saying he failed his interview. After having another breakdown, Yi Jie decides he's had enough and self-deletes in the middle of the city, ignoring the call from his mother. Darkness takes over for a few seconds and then Yi Jie discovers he's in a private plane. When he looks at his reflection, he freaks out because his face has changed, and at that moment he notices the mysterious lady sitting nearby. She has his goodbye letter in her hands, but she magically burns it before taking off her shades, revealing bright red eyes. Suddenly Yi Jie is transported to the terrifying room with a tall tower in the middle of a red sea and demons trying to climb up. The lady reveals she's death and she's brought him here to punish him because he made a mockery of her. She grabs him by the neck and throws him off the edge, so the monsters try to grab him as he falls. There are lots of creatures waiting for him in the water, but when he crashes, he wakes up in the plane with the other face again. Death is there too and explains that she'll make Yi Jie die 12 more times as a punishment. His soul will enter the bodies of 12 people facing imminent death, and he'll die regardless of where he ends up. However if he manages to evade a death, he'll be allowed to keep that life. Yi Jie doesn't care about those deaths because he wants to end it all, but after death disappears, the plane enters a raging storm. Unconsciously panicking, Yi Jie puts on the life jacket and fastens his seat belt while the flight attendant comes to tell him that it's just some turbulence. After a few minutes of shaking, the plane stabilizes and the attendant lets Yi Jie alone. Still confused, Yi Jie starts looking around and realizes he's in the body of a very rich person. Suddenly a glowing pebble enters his mind, informing him of the details of the person he's possessing. This guy is the CEO of the important company Yi Jie applied to, and he's been rich his whole life. Tae Yu is his older brother and they competed since they were kids over everything including who would lead the company. All his hard work allowed him to win his father's approval and eventually he was chosen to become the new CEO. Yi Jie is very pleased by this lifestyle and decides he wants to keep it, but at that moment an engine blows up. The plane starts going down at great speed and Yi Jie has to dodge all the sliding furniture before going back to his seat to fasten the seat belt. The pilot tries to control the plane to no avail and the fire spreads, creating a hole in the side of the plane that sucks out the pilot and the flight attendant. Yi Jie can only watch as an explosion makes the whole plane catch on fire and he's soon burned to death. Afterward Yi Jie wakes up in the dark room, which is now a barren area with a creepy glowing door and a desk for death. On this desk, a clock counts down the lives Yi Jie has left. While death puts a bunch of bullets in her gun, she explains a few things. The souls from those bodies are already dead so Yi Jie isn't stealing their lives, he's just giving the bodies a second chance. If he fails to survive in all of them, he'll go to hell, and death decides to give him a preview. She grabs Yi Jie and takes him behind the door, where he sees indescribable horrors. When death takes him out, Yi Jie has his breakdown, returning to the beginning. He doesn't understand what he did to deserve hell, so death says he's guilty of finding her before she could find him. She also reveals that depending on his actions, if he survives in one of the 12 bodies, he may avoid going to hell. Yi Jie decides he'll try to survive after all and death shoots him to send him into the second life. 
he finds himself falling from a plane in a new body wearing a sports jumpsuit but without a parachute. As he panics, he sees three other men jumping with him and carrying cameras. A man catches him to help him and at that moment, the glowing pebble enters his mind. This body belongs to an adrenaline junkier who loves extreme sports and has done lots of crazy challenges, earning him four Guinness World Records. Today he's doing a challenge that consists of diving without a parachute from a thousand miles above ground to land on a safety net. The event is being transmitted on national TV, and if he pulls it off, his sponsor will give him three billion in cash. The memory of the sponsor shows a guy playing with a lighter. The idea of such money makes Yee Jae want to complete the challenge, so he pushes the helper away and begins falling at great speed. The body lost the original soul but kept the abilities, so Yee Jae is feeling confident and even excited. When he finally reaches his destination, he misses the net and lands on the ground, instantly dying. Yee Jae appears in the dark room again, saying it's not fair to be considered a sinner because he didn't hurt anyone when he self-deleted. Death calls him selfish because he can't tell he did hurt people and shoots him to send him into the third life. Soon he wakes up in the body of a teenager at a school and notices a classmate laughing at the video of the death of the parachute guy. This tells Yee Jae that all these lives belong to the same reality. He considers hitting him for it, but at that moment the glowing pebble reaches his mind. This teenager lost his father at the age of five and was raised by a single mother, who works hard to pay for his needs. The boy wanted to make her proud but he hated coming to school because Jin Sang and his friends kept harassing him with violence, robbery, or stupid pranks like throwing milk on him while recording him. However he never told his mother this not to worry her. Eventually the boy felt like school became hell and his tormentors were demons, so he decided to self-delete. Yi Jae realizes that to survive he only has to choose not to self-delete. At that moment Jin Sang approaches him and reminds him to bring him milk before hitting him. Yi Jae refuses to be a victim and chases after him to knock him down with a chair. One of Jing San's friends tries to stop him, but Yi Jae quickly subdues him before pushing Jing San against the window, asking him to apologize. Suddenly someone knocks Yi Jae down, it's Tae Sok, a very strong teen who immediately overpowers him and beats him down. Then he and his friend hold Yi Jae down so that Jin Sang can punch him too while the classmates watch in fear. At that moment the teacher arrives so everyone goes to their place, but after class, Jing San and his gang catch Yi Jae to beat him up again. Eventually even Tae Sok thinks it's too much and asks Jing San to stop, but he doesn't care and keeps going. However he finally stops when he sees the girl he likes watching them. Afterward Yi Jae goes to the boy's home and is shaken to see the photos and notes of the guy's mother, making him remember his own. His mom would leave dinner for him and go to work, which tired her a lot, so sometimes Yi Jae would join her to help her out in return. When the boy's mother comes home too, she notices her son has better manners, and Yi Jae almost cries as he remembers his own mother again. The next day, Yi Jae approaches Tae Sok in the bathroom to ask him why he lets Jin Sang boss him around if he's stronger, so Tae Sok explains that the real boss of the school is a senior student whose gang Jin Sang belongs to. If they mess with Jin Sang, then the older kids will destroy them. Later during lunchtime, Jin Sang hits Yi Jae again, so Yi Jae retaliates by throwing his bowl of noodles on Jin Sang's head. While Yi Jae goes away, Jin Sang orders Tae Sok to go after him, but Tae Sok refuses because he wants to eat lunch. He tells Jin Sang to wash and everyone laughs while a flashback reveals that Yi Jae told Tae Sok not to interfere because he had a plan. A humiliated Jing Sang goes to ask his seniors for help and the gang soon comes to the classroom ready to fight. However when the leader sees that Jin Sang wants him to beat up a little wimp, the leader gets angry, calling Jin Sang a coward for not being able to handle a small boy. He doesn't want his gang to be associated with cowards, so he grabs Jin Sang and tells him to never approach them again. Proud of himself, Yi Jae makes fun of Jin Sang for his loss, and when Jin Sang tries to hit him, Tae Sok hits him first. Now nobody in the school respects Jin Sang anymore, and as he rushes out of the classroom, he discovers the girl he likes is with the senior leader. In the evening, Yi Jae goes for a run and is almost hit by a truck, but luckily the driver stops just in time. Distracted by this, Yi Jae doesn't hear Jin Sang approaching him from behind to hit him with a brick to make him fall, then he proceeds to beat him up to death. Yi Jae reappears in the dark room and yells at death, causing her to throw him against the wall before stepping on his face and shooting him again. For his fourth life, Yi Jae wakes up in the body of a hostage under interrogation. A group of dangerous men throw water on his face and ask him where he hid the girl and the money. When he doesn't answer, they threaten to stab his eye, so he announces he'll talk. However the memories aren't back yet so when he asks for a moment, the men threaten him with a hammer. Luckily the glowing pebble finally shows up and Yi Jae learns this body belongs to a criminal organization with clients all over the world. They work as fixers, meaning they'll solve a client's problem through any means necessary, which may include murder. One day he fell in love with his boss's girlfriend, and when she mentioned wanting to escape from this life full of crime and abuse, he offered to run away together. He stole 10 billion from his boss and hid them in a safe place, but on his way to meet with the lady, he was captured by his co-workers. Realizing that he has this guy's amazing abilities, Yi Jae starts fighting everyone, using the chair as a weapon until it breaks. When he dodges an incoming knife, he causes a man to stab his partner, 
But after the initial shock he keeps on fighting. There are weapons and tools on the wall, so he turns off the main light and grabs a flashlight to fight with an advantage. A fierce battle in the darkness ensues and one by one, Yi J kills every single agent. Afterward Yi J thinks that with this guy's abilities he could survive anything, so he should retrieve the money and run away. He retrieves his phone and steals a bike to escape, discovering that all this has been happening in the back of a truck. As Yi J speeds through the city, his boss learns his men failed and tracks Yi J's location through his cell phone. That location is then sent to all the hunters in the area, promising a juicy reward if they catch Yi J. Soon a chase begins through the city bridge and the agents open fire on Yi J, who dodges everything and hides behind a truck. Once he manages to appear behind the agent's cars, he uses the bike to disarm a guy, then he starts driving like crazy. The other hunter misses his shots and hits cars instead, causing lots of crashes. The truck that captured him also shows up and tries to block the bridge, but the cars crash against it and cause an explosion that EJ simply jumps over. After leaving the bridge, a bunch of bikes and a police car start chasing him too. When he's about to reach a dangerous avenue, Yi J speeds up and causes a bunch of vehicles to crash, blocking the way for the cop and a few bikes. There are still a few bikers following him and more enemy cars blocking the streets, so Yi J enters a mall and speeds up until he's in the center surrounded by enemies. At that moment he notices an elevator, so he goes inside and closes the door right before another bike could hit him. When he reaches the roof, he makes a big jump and lands in a party pool, where his phone stops working. Now the enemy can't track him anymore. Then Yi J goes to meet with the woman at the pier. She immediately hugs him and Yi J senses how much the guy loved her. Yi J tells her where the money is so they can head there, only to be suddenly shot by her, revealing this was her plan all along. Once again Yi J wakes up in the dark room, finding death laughing at him. However he isn't bothered because he didn't give the woman the exact location of the money, so he plans to retrieve it during his next life. When death shoots him, Yi J's fifth life starts in juvie. He's in a tiny cell and he can't help freaking out, but luckily a guard comes over to take him to his real cell. On their way there, the other prisoners throw a ball against the fencing as a threat, even looking at him creepily. In the cell, he discovers he's got cellmates and learns that he'll be released in four days. He's also told that a psychopathic killer is staying in the cell with them, and Yi J notices all the creepy art and books about psychopathic analysis on the shelves. At that moment the psychopathic murderer is brought back and Yi J is shocked to see it's Jinsang. Remembering his previous death, Yi J begins beating him up, but the other prisoners immediately pull him away. At that moment the glowing pebble finally comes to his mind and Yi J learns this body belongs to an MMA fighter. The guy's family was in some trouble with a gang and needed money quickly, so he accepted a deal, he took the fall for a hit and run and would get rewarded with 200 million after the trial. Since he was 18 he was still a minor in Korea, so the plan was to quickly be released on probation. While making the deal with the lawyer, a man watched them from the shadows while playing with a lighter. The guy turned himself in with a fake confession, but sadly during the trial, the woman who was hit died, so the judge sentenced him to two years of imprisonment for manslaughter. Later when the lawyer visited him in prison, the guy asked for two billion to keep quiet or he would tell the police everything. Another memory shows Yi J the arrival of Jinsang and how he said a bunch of creepy but dumb things as if he was pretending to be a psychopath to scare the others and be in control. Back in the present, Yi J starts laughing as he realizes Jinsang isn't a psychopath, he's here because he killed the high school boy. Yi J begins slapping Jinsang as he calls him out in front of the others, telling them the truth. Jinsang is too afraid to deny it and the rest of the cellmates beat him up for revenge. When they get time out in the backyard, other prisoners start bothering Jinsang too, which Yi J finds very satisfying. Later the group has carpentry lessons and a prisoner shoots the blade from his saw at Yi J, who dodges just in time. The blade ends up bouncing on the wall and killing another guy instead. Yi J yells for help and after the guards take the injured man away, all the other prisoners grab some tools while telling Yi J that the lawyer wants him dead. Ji Young immediately rushes out in fear before a fight ensues, and Yi J gets to enjoy the body's amazing MMA fighting skills. With quick and precise strikes, he fights all the prisoners at the same time, knocking them down one by one with a combination of punching, kicking, and using any object in the room. At that moment Ji Young comes back with a crowbar and Yi J realizes he wanted to help, so he decides to befriend him. That night, Yi J finds Jin Sang in the washroom sharpening a tool to kill him. After punching him, Yi J considers killing him first, but that would get him more jail time. Instead he decides to traumatize Jinsang by saying he sees the ghost of the dead schoolboy, sharing details of his previous life that only he would know. When he says the ghost will haunt him forever, Jinsang ends up wetting his pants in fear. Eventually the day of Yi J's release finally arrives and before leaving, he gives Jinsang some milk, saying it was sent by the ghost. Outside the lawyer is waiting for him with the money but Yi J turns it down, telling him he wants to live a clean life from now on. Sometime later, he makes it to the pier and finds the money he hid in the other life, unaware someone is following him. Now he's ready to start a new life, so he rents a room and takes a nap. He wakes up when he feels his mother touching his face, but it turns out to be just a dream. 
At that moment his phone rings with a call from the mom of this body, so a crying Yi Jae accepts to visit her soon. Later at the station, Yi Jae separates the money into two bags and puts one away in a locker, which will be confiscated if he doesn't return after four days. When he arrives at his hometown, Yi Jae gets attacked from behind and stabbed by an old man who turns out to be the father of the victim of the hit and run. He had been furious that the killer could get away with just two years because of his age, so he came looking for revenge. Yi Jae apologizes and tells him he didn't do it, but at that moment they hear footsteps and the man runs away. Suddenly Ji Young shows up and runs to help him, only to suddenly take out a knife too. The day of the fight, he'd actually gone out to look for a weapon to kill Yi Jae for the lawyer's reward, but when he came back it was already over so he pretended to be a nice guy. Yi Jae tries to buy him off, but Ji Young doesn't believe he has money and proceeds to stab him multiple times. Soon Yi Jae dies while the phone rings with a call from the mom. Once again, Yi Jae wakes up in the dark room and only exchanges a few words with death before he gets shot again. To his horror, he discovers his sixth life begins as a baby. He starts crying in the middle of a restaurant, so the mother apologizes to everyone and takes him to her car. There she shows her true face, angrily throwing a tantrum and yelling at the baby for being an annoyance. Because he's in a newborn body with no memories, the glowing pebble never comes. The mother takes the baby to her home and carelessly throws him on the couch, where he's gently picked up by the father. Yi Jae thinks the man may be nicer, but soon he shows his true face too, he brings over expired food and when Yi Jae refuses to eat it, he starts yelling and insulting him too. At that moment a cop arrives with a social worker, who has received a report about a potential case of abuse. They come inside and try to check on the baby's body, but the father interrupts them to show them his business card, proving he's also a social worker for child welfare. The duo apologizes for the misunderstanding and leaves, so now the mother is furious and drops the baby on the floor to then kill him with a pillow. When he appears in the dark room, Death explains that sometimes not even babies get a chance so Yi Jae shouldn't take life for granted, then she shoots him. Yi Jae's seventh life starts outside the train station, and using the phone in his pocket he notices his locker is about to expire. He rushes into the station as he bumps into a bunch of people and makes it to the lockers right before the employees open them. After retrieving his money, Yi Jae sees his reflection and discovers his new faces in advertisements around the station. The glowing pebble reaches his mind and he learns he's in the body of a model who was popular since high school. A modeling career came easy, thanks to his looks and now he has lots of money because of it. Excited, Yi Jae goes to his new house and discovers it's incredibly fancy, so he's eager to keep this life. He also finds a newspaper and learns that the baby's parents were caught for the murder. The death of the MMA fighter and the traffic accidents from the bike chase are also in the news, but nobody knows what caused them. Then he gets a call from a friend inviting him to a VIP party, and Yi Jae decides to join. He drinks a lot because that's what he's used to, but the model's body is lightweight and he ends up drunker than planned. During the party, he's surprised to see Tae Yu, who is now CEO thanks to his brother's death. The next morning, Yi Jae oversleeps because of his hangover, so the brother he has in this life has to come to wake him up. The guy is going to the USA for a week and the model had promised to take care of his cafe, so now Yi Jae has a new job to do. During his first work day, Yi Jae already considers closing the cafe after his brother leaves. However he gets a big shock when sees Jisoo come inside. Staring in awe, Yi Jae remembers all the special moments together and the day they met, which happened when the wind blew away Jisoo's papers and Yi Jae found them. Yi Jae is very nervous when he gives Jisoo her order to the point his hands are shaking. His brother explains she comes every day to work and stays until closing time, also that she's a published author. Curious, Yi Jae searches her name on the internet and discovers she won a writing contest and got a publishing deal. When she received her prize, she thanked her boyfriend for always believing in her. The envelope she tried to show him that day hadn't been pity money, it was her prize. Feeling guilty, Yi Jae rushes to the bookshop to buy Jisoo's book because he remembers her saying she put her personal experiences in her stories. As he reads the novel, he discovers many of the story beats match their moments together, like the day he was jealous of her co-worker and they told I love you to each other. As he cries, Yi Jae also sees that the bookshop sells the fancy pen that he promised he would gift her one day. He did buy the pen in secret and engraved her name on it, but it got lost when he was moving all his things under the rain. Later at the cafe, the guy that he saw the other day with the flowers arrives with a woman and a little girl that calls Jisoo auntie. Feeling like an idiot, Yi Jae realizes this is Jisoo's brother, and decides to keep the cafe open the whole week just for her. The next day, Yi Jae takes Jisoo's order with less anxiety and gives her some cake on the house, saying he's a fan of his book. He also pretends he has an idea for a story, telling him about Lady Death and all the lives he's been going through as if it was happening to the character. Then Yi Jae asks her to sign her book and is shocked to see she has the engraved pen. It turns out his mother picked up all his things after his death and gave Jisoo the pen after the funeral. During the next few days, Jisoo keeps going to the cafe and Yi Jae sits down with her to chat for a while. One evening, Jisoo wonders why the protag of the story hasn't visited his mother yet, and Yi Jae says it would be too painful. 
Soon after she leaves, Yi Jie sees police cars pass by and hears from a client that a regular customer was caught in an accident. Assuming the worst, Yi Jie runs down the street and screams when he sees the blood on the street, so the cops have to hold him back. At that moment Yi Jie sees Jisoo among the crowd and calms down. Jisoo approaches him to thank him for caring so much and shares that she felt the same when she got a call about her boyfriend's death to the point she had a breakdown in the hospital's reception. The next day, Jisoo visits Yi Jie's resting place and cries as she says she misses him, which is seen from afar by Yi Jie. After she leaves, Yi Jie dares to approach his own memorial, only to suddenly bump into his mother. Pretending he's here for another person, Yi Jie leaves the room, not daring to talk to her. He watches from afar and sees her clean the memorial before running to the restroom to cry her heart out. Not being able to take it, Yi Jie runs outside and has a breakdown. Later Yi Jie writes a letter to his mother pretending to be a friend, saying that Yi Jie left her some money after his death. He goes to his old house and leaves the letter with a bag of money from his other life, running away fast after seeing his old pictures. On the street, a sign suddenly falls from its hinges and falls on Yi Jie, instantly killing him, but it turns out to be just a dream. The next day after another afternoon of chatting with Jisoo, Yi Jie offers to walk her home, remembering the times they used to walk hand in hand. Overwhelmed by emotions, Yi Jie finally confesses the whole truth to her as some flashbacks show how Jisoo's office co-workers would make fun of her for dating a waiter. However Jisoo would introduce Yi Jie proudly to them, not letting them insult their relationship. Yi Jie apologizes to Jisoo for leaving her, but before she can react, they're suddenly hit by a fancy car. Jisoo dies instantly, but Yi Jie is still alive and sees the face of the driver, it's Taeyu. Yi Jie realizes he's the guy with the lighter and he's been connected to every life he's gone through. The lawyer is also in the car but he runs away when he sees the bodies, and when Taeyu sees Yi Jie is still alive, he puts on gloves to finish him off. Soon Yi Jie wakes up in the dark room, and he's so furious that he rushes to take Death's gun and shoots her in the head.